I'm just about to start blocking out the sides or the sides of each of these. I've got about 25 millimeters, give or take, play either side. So I'm going to cut some of that, that spruce up and start to put a block bottom, middle and top on each of those four openings. method for fixing on this windy day first of all we have to set our position so I've marked from the front leading edge of the brick back 18 and a half centimeters and just plumbed a line all the way up to the top so I've picked out a spot on the bottom in the middle and at the top for the blocks to go and I've replicated that each side and obviously it would have to match on that frame and the other two the depth in which it comes back boom boom um, from the front of the brick pillar. So once we have that marked out, we can start pre drilling our blocks and then fix them in. Okay, I'm well and truly done, everyone. Does that rhyme? I think it rhymes. Blocked, 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 blocked. Perfectly set up for next week. My painter has got everything ready to go. Oh, by the way, glass. He picked up glass today, so I've got all the glass ready to go. So we will deal with that, and I'll show you all about glass next week. So Sunday afternoon, at the chateau, what are we doing? We're painting. So I just figured that we need to spend an hour or two getting some coats on whatever's left to paint, the top coat on the sashes and the frames, and then start to think about the molding and the finishing trims for the surround of the windows. Once they all go in, hopefully early next week, once we get all these double coated, Whatever we can start to install. So um, here's my little setup with all my glazing beading there. And on this side, these are all the flat D molds for the surrounds, the external surrounds of the window back to the brick reveals or the brick pillars. And we've got a few little site helpers as well, just hanging around, ready to help paint as well. So good news, I might get it done a bit faster. So, I've got 24 trims to get through, and not just get through, whip through. So you wanna see how fast I can whip through them? Keep watching. that was going to be quick and when I keep make a promise I keep a promise and here we go all undercoated these will dry in like five minutes obviously don't need to do 
that side because that'll be up against the glass in there so it's just the seen face and the face that will be exposed to the weather and obviously had to hold these somewhere so didn't do the ends and that'll be mitered they'll be all mitered anyway so it won't really matter so yeah good progress meanwhile in the honeymoon suite slash paint shop just flipped all these around to put the second coat of paint on the last side and then it's just a case of drying and installing and Jade's over here with her painting top on might get a glimpse of that under there uh, putting the last coat on the last side of this and it's a little bit of a trick to get all the paint coats on or the coats of paint you might say uh, before we install and that way we can all we need to do is put the glass in and touch up anything we need to later on and just makes it a lot easier uh, when we get to that stage rather than trying to cut in around the frame and everything like that. <laughs> okay, just trying to wrap this up for Sunday. Um, there was one other thing I quickly did earlier. I'll come out and strip back the main entry door for this uh, room I'm working on for the windows. So there it is, just the front face. Strip back, I might just give it a light sand and then undercoat and a couple of top coats shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, and there's some glass that I got for that as well. Okay, guilty as charged. I'm still out here. Just trying to get as prepared I can for the week to come. So what I've done is I've cut <clears throat> all the sill pieces ready to go. So effectively the frame will sit up flush with here and here and this block this block and the same on the right hand side and then it'll come forward about the thickness of the blocks and then we'll worry about the sill detail for the water runoff later so i've got all those in and they're all leveled ready to go so all right guys ready to rock and roll in the gym um, where these window frames are being installed as you can see i've got the timbers Silk timbers ready to go. They're all leveled and ready to sit the new frames, which are conveniently behind me uh, in the room for the install. So yeah, let's stop talking. Let's start installing. So I've already put the first frame in. I've just tacked it in with some screws there and there. Other than that, the configuration for these will be sash Double sash, double sash, fixed and fixed. So I have to say that installing these blocks has made my life 5,000 gazillion times easier. So as you just saw, it's just a case of standing the frame up inside the opening and then just putting a screw straight in there into the block, which is already screwed to the brickwork. So the way I like to do it with windows is obviously I'm by myself, but I like to get the bottom sill to the bottom of the frame even side to side inside the brick opening and screw it off there and then I can plumb with the level where I need to go side to side there in this case it doesn't really matter because the frame is static as it's just receiving fixed glass panels so it's not really as important as what it is going to be for these two but it's still good practice just to each time make sure you screw the bottom off then you can move the top side to side to get it plumb exactly where you need it to be screw screw and then obviously you can screw into the center without making without just to ensure or with ensuring i should say that there's no bow um, in the middle of your frame but again it's, it's pretty rigid this frame so it'll be really hard to get any sort of bow um outwards bow there so then once you know that that's all screwed in and secure you know it's quite solid then 
it's just a case of putting some molding on the outside to cover all that all the way up and all around run a bead of cork across there paint that sill maybe cork underneath there and then once the trims are installed around the side we can spray expanding foam or mousse as they call it here into that gap and down the side and that'll hold it in forever the other good thing about this type of installation with screwing into this let's call it a pocket um, is that when the glass comes in and butts up to here and then the other glazing bead comes on this side of the glass you got a fully concealed fixing that you're never going to see so uh, kind of works a treat and then everyone that comes in after that is like oh my god how did these windows how are they being held in place it's amazing i can't believe it i've never seen this before in my life so yeah that's uh, another good aspect of this fixing. And also I should mention as well that by having the beading on the back here, you can spray the foam, the expanding mousse in there, and it's not just gonna shoot out the other side. So it gives you sort of a backing. And then whatever comes out this side, you can just cut it off flush and install your trim or um, treat your wall or your brick pillars, however you need to treat it to hide all that in the end anyway. Okay, so we're just out cutting trims we've finally got to the stage where we've cut trims because we've still actually got a sash uh the last sash frame to fix up but for now we just needed a break from that or well, i just needed a break from that so i've just started to come and cut some trims so i'm just outside now measuring the head trim first from the brick opening at 130 so we can cut that to length Around this tree, we can do a bit of a test fit. And that's that. And then while there's the brad gun down there, you get the brad gun. It's so well cut, it stays in there without even any nails. Just tack it in for now, and then later we'll come with the proper bradder. And finish it off. The sides, so all I'm going to do is measure up from the sill down on the bottom here, all the way to the top. We've got 224 on the left, and 224 on the right. So let's cut those. Okay, with those cut, we just test fit them, start them into the mitre, and then stick them in there. And that one just flexes in perfectly. Exhibit B. For now, we can uh, get the trims installed, actually, get the sashes installed. So let's do it. The moment of truth. Pretty happy with that. So all that needs to happen now is down here we've got the espanolette that locks the window in place when it's closed on this hook. So we just have to, at the sill, 
and the head of the window cut out in here, which I've got a method for, which we're gonna go through later. So we can actually lock these windows closed. And then once that's done, we can foam the windows in. I've got the trims on, as I said, I've got some backing for the foam to go on. They're just tacked in for now. And then cut that all off flush later on with the inside frame there. And then we can put some glass in. So one thing I should mention that needed to happen was cutting the stops for the head and sill of the frames for the doors to close up to on the external side. So I've just done the first one. It's a bit of a one I prepared earlier moment. So when you close the door, it closes up to the stop. Like so. And that cut out there is for the stop on the other sash and yeah that's it so they've just been nailed in with some brad nails ready to paint so now i'm just going to finish off the other one around there and we can get on to the espanolette bolts so i'm just doing this uh these espanolette bolt holes got a 16 mil bit auger bit here i've just marked out on the sill where it needs to go and I've just gone along and drilled 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 that bearing in mind I haven't done the top yet but you get the idea so following cleaning this out a little bit more I'm just going to drill a hole in the position through the top and through this sill piece here tight enough that I'll just be able to drive the steel rod into that hole and then once once the door gets closed with the other sash of course it'll lock in position and then i can think about putting a little neat little cover plate over that section there easy as pie and here's what i mean with the little trim on the front i've just cut out a little hole got a nice little shadow detail there once all that's painted white it'll be quite inconspicuous and then the door just comes in and locks in place like that job done so another day comes to a close uh, so tomorrow what's ahead just anyway I've just foamed all the windows in that one that one sorry that one and that one so that one's already been done earlier today honestly I've never used foam that's so expansive I've barely even sprayed it into that cavity and already it's just spewing out everywhere but anyhow once it's dry we can just cut that off neatly um finish that espanolette i've just got to finish that one they're all cut i've just got to finish off the locking mechanism for them and the same on that one there and then these two don't need anything else done then it's just glass which is all there and there there and that's it so you can do some wet glazing some more glazing bead on these two and see how we're looking this time tomorrow night hopefully a lot closer to finishing on track anyway okay there she goes just taking the sashes into the honeymoon suite that means we're going to glaze that also means that the espanolettes the mortised holes for the espanolette hooks are all done so came up quite neatly some a bit different than others i'm just going to paint over that i've had to rebate all those plates in um, and then we're going to paint them because all this has to be plastered and everything still and treated so but anyway everything's locking nicely so that kind of concludes everything in this room for now so we're just gonna head over and start glazing well we can glaze these two and that's it so we'll um catch up with you soon